today's video, we are going to continue doing basement renovations. And for today specifically, we're focusing on this wall behind me. This is our media unit wall. We are doing a custom built-in bookshelf media unit. Um, I'm going to insert like a little drawing of what it looks like. Um, what I've done is I have taken the measurements and planned accordingly. Our biggest obstacle is this drop down of the ceiling. You can see here. Um, that is the ductwork for our AC that runs throughout the house. So we can't really do anything about that. How I'm going to compromise with it though, is I'm going to do a bookshelf coming down perpendicular to that wall, to this drop down, mirror it on this side, therefore giving me bookshelves right here. We're gonna do some open shelves down here below the TV um, with like two drawers and then above the two drawers will be some space for like gaming consoles and stuff like that. I'm super excited to tackle this. Doing this wall and doing this built-in was in my vision from the very beginning when I bought my home. So I'm super excited to finally see what it's gonna be like come to life. Also, for today's video, I have a very special guest and I'm super excited about it. Uh, welcome, my father. Come on, Dad. This Hello, is my, everyone. This is my dad. Um, he drove down to Dayton to help with the built-ins for me. Um, A, to bounce ideas off of, B, to help with some lifting, and C, he has a he's like the jack of all trades, so he has a little bit more expertise in building stuff. With this being such a big project, um, I just wanted a little bit more hands on deck sort of thing. And then, of course, we'll have some special guest appearances from our little helper and the husband, of course, too. So, without further ado, let's jump into today's video. And just remember, if you guys do like home renovation content, DIYs, as well as some lifestyle stuff sprinkled in here and there, then please subscribe and hit that bell notification so you get notified every single time that I upload. And let's get to these built-ins. Heading to Home Depot to get the lumber and wish us luck because we don't have a pickup truck and we're picking up four by eight boards. So we have some ratchet straps to try to ratchet it down and see if we can make it work. So we'll be back in a minute. Not too bad. They made it here. Oh, we got to unload. All right, guys. So this is what it is currently looking like down here. This is drywall, so we can ignore that. But looking pretty good. So my father just took this off of here because we were trying to figure out what kind of backing we wanted to do for these bookshelves. And ultimately we decided the drywall is fine. So we're building the frame for the bookshelves and then we're just gonna be painting the wall behind everything the same color as the shelves. So it like truly is a built in. So of course the first thing we had to do was patch in the drywall where that wood paneling was. I wanted to have the a uniform backing to these built-ins and the easiest and cheapest way to do that was to just fill in this lower half with the drywall that matched the top of the first half. And then of course when you're installing drywall you have to take the seams, um, any of the screws that you put into the drywall, patch those holes, and then just make everything nice and smooth. And then I didn't want my built-ins right on the ground. I wanted them to be lifted a little bit, and so we built a cabinet base, uh, just like you would for like a kitchen cabinet sort of built-ins. And if you're doing uh, built-ins by doing the IKEA hack that is very popular, um, 
you also want to build a base like this as well and then put those ikea bookshelves up on this base that's the best way to like make sure things are level because this base is how you can use shims to make sure everything's nice and level like nate was doing I mean, in theory, if we get the base nice and level, it should make other things level easier. I mean, yes, the earlier on your stuff isn't level, <laughs> the worse off you're going to be. Okay, so we are getting ready to strip down this wood into three 16 inch panels that will then be used for the upright of the bookshelves. So the board was 48 inches. Luckily math masked out <laughs> and we can fit three of them perfectly at 16 inches. Uh, I don't own saw horses so we are working from the floor. You know you do what you gotta do. Um, and then we have a circular saw and we'll just cut right down this, so it's kind of like a makeshift table saw situation. If you have a table saw, this would be a lot easier to do. This is how you add seam allowance to your patterns in fashion design school. You mark it. What did you got? Cheese? All the way around. A significant life, just what it was needed. Clean in the blackest night, cloistered in injustice dead. Because we are measuring 400,000 times and cutting once, um, Dad is for the second board. We're measuring at the 16 and the 32 mark rather than 16 cut, 16 cut. So now that we know for sure, our math is mathing. That's what we're doing. So <clears throat> I am going to still draw the guidelines and then we'll get that in place, the straight edge in place to cut it. So I kind of touched on it, but our cabinets are 16 inches deep, which is a little bit bigger than most bookshelves. Um, and I just wanted this because that was what would fit nicely in the space without being too big. Um, and I also wanted to actually have enough space for decor and I didn't want to be jeopardizing things being too close to the edge. So when my father and I assembled these, we just countersinked any of the screws that were going to be exposed so that way I could easily wood fill over top of them. The only ones that are actually exposed are the ones on the upper sections that's closest to the TV. Everything else is either hid by other boards or um, against the wall. So we actually only had a countersink uh, I would say maybe 20 screws, which wasn't too bad. All right, so to make our shelves, boom, 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 we lined our verticals up where we want them and we measured that space. And so these are, these are the same width as our verticals, so 16 inches, and then we're gonna be cutting this to the length of 40. And that'll be for that side, boom, here, boom, and up there. Actually, we need two on that side. So we 
have our two bookshelf boxes now. We still need to build the box for the TV stand, okay? And then it'll be building the shelves and then trimming it all out to make it actually built in. So I would say we're doing pretty good. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. How you like it? You like it? Yeah, it's different, huh? Looks totally different. All right, so figuring out how many drawers we're putting in, um, I decided I wanted three smaller drawers rather than one. Two big ones. Two big ones. Um, and we're going to put them in with the brad nailer, so then that way there's no screws showing on the shelf. Um, this is this inside from inside to inside is 57 inches. I literally just took that number, divided it by three. It's getting us 18. So we're working 19 inches. Yes. Maybe. So 19, 18, 19. But that'll get kind of shimmy based off of 12 and three fourths. That's 12 and three quarters. Measure 4,000 times, cut once. <laughs> I was confused for like two seconds, two seconds, okay, I had a moment, because I went to go put it in that way. like this, so I was oh. like, that's not <laughs> correct. <laughs> Be sharp, and it's gonna be sharp. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I love it. I came down earlier today and to get the charger before you woke up. Uh -huh. And I literally, I literally looked over here and I just smiled <laughs> like it just made me so happy. <laughs> This is the midway point check-in. Um, my father is going to go back home. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming down and helping getting a huge head start on this because like literally I could not have done this by myself. I would have needed someone's help. Um, so guys, just make sure you give my father a big round of applause down in the comments. Dad, I hope you enjoy this video when you see it uh, in a week or so. Um, and I will keep recording for you guys. Like I said, this is just a midway point. Um, we're going to keep working on these, but it's just going to be you and I. Maybe a tiny bit of assistance from my husband now. Or my tiny little assistant. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in just a second and we'll keep working. Goodbye. All right, guys, we are back to it being just you and me um, with a little bit of Nate sprinkled in from time to time and guest appearances for me and Lee. I kind of took last night um, after my father left to figure some details out, that being trim and how I wanted to trim these out, as well as how I was going to install this 
shelf above me. So this shelf above me, I'm going to go pick up some lumber later today, but that is going to be done like a floating shelf. So attaching support to the studs in the wall and then basically making a sandwich out of the support studs um, and finishing it off with the trim. As far as trim goes, I went yesterday to Home Depot and scoured the trim, kind of figuring out what I was going to want and what I was going to like. There's still a few details I'm not 100% sure of when it comes to these. I think I'm just gonna, I'm one of those type of people that I have to see it and say, yes, that's what I'm, I'm wanting. So I think that's kind of where I'm at. We're just going to <laughs> trial and error the trend, basically. Um, I also, one thing that did help me with the trend is last night, um, I went on Canva. I uploaded a photo of this built in. And started to play around with, okay, this part's being painted white, this part's being painted blue, and this part is saying natural. And that's what you can kind of see here. That tan represents a natural color, uh, wood grain stained finish. The blue obviously being the blue. Um, and then the white, I, like I said, I kind of want to hide that box as if it's more of like a soffit. However, I'm going to have secret storage up there it's just not going to be storage that we like reach for very often um which is why like i don't want to really draw attention to it uh so yeah that's where we're at um first order of business is going to be sanding this wall getting it nice and smooth i'm just really trying to perfect the wall since we did install this drywall on the lower half then i am going to start painting the sides of the built-ins. Um, I'm going to tape off the lower part here so it doesn't get uh, paint on it. And yeah, we're just going to keep plugging away. I don't really need a new friend, so spend your time with me. Looking for someone who can play, though. Want to hang with me? I'm not really looking for a friend, so spend your time with me. Looking for someone not afraid of Give it all to me Get next to me, get next to me All that I want is to get next to you, get next to you Not asking for much, but It's like the two of us are gold and the gold You see, what do you got? So take a chance, take a chance on me It's magical when you are close So get close, oh babe What do you got? Cause I'm gold So in between the coats of paint on the cabinetry I also made sure that I took my orbital sander and sanded any high points down just to give it a really good clean smooth finish um, this also because I did a two-in-one primer to where I didn't have to you know pre prime everything um, doing the first coat allowed me to see any uh, any imperfections in the wood and kind of correct it and wood fill it and also obviously sand and smooth that down and don't worry guys, I did anchor these cabinets to the wall. Um, it just wasn't done at this point in time, but before I started putting the floating shelf in, they did get anchored. Wipe the excess wood condition off in the direction of the wood grain. 
do not let the conditioner dry before wiping the excess. So I think I still need something to wipe the excess off. So I was trying to match the flooring for the wood. I still gotta put a baseboard up, so ignore that. I went ahead and did the inside of the bottom shelf over here so I could step back, determine if I liked it. Um, examples just weren't cutting it for me. I do like it. I think it matches the floor really well, especially on camera. In person, it's a little bit darker than I wanted, but it's because I was putting it on with a brush. Because then I started putting it on with a towel, much lighter, much more of the like saturation I was looking for. Started doing it with the rag over here, much better results. I do still need to do this front, but I'm gonna keep staining and kind of show you guys exactly like how I'm doing this. So I just have this old rag towel here. I have one end kind of that I'm using as like my main stain applicator. And then this is to wipe extra off. So if I'm doing like a little corner, I'll actually get up in there and I kind of am just like rubbing it in. Okay, so how we're going to install the shelves is we're gonna use these little brackets. I'm gonna pop them up on the screen so you can see. Um, I don't need like all the holes going up and down to give it like that Ikea look basically where the shelves are completely adjustable. I do wanna have a little bit of adjustments because I wanna be able to, for different holidays, put different decor up. Um, you know, like sometimes Christmas trees, you know, like the shelf decor trees are a little tall. So I want to be able to have a little bit of lean way. So Nate came up with an idea to best measure this um, and get consistent heights for the holes. He said, tell me how many inches apart you want them and let's make it. So he made a template. Can you explain this template, babe? Um, so basically rather than like going off of trying to measure each hole and mark each hole and then uh, there's that much room for error with every time you measure. So I just got a known, <clears throat> so this, this uh, edge here on the left I know is straight and level. Um, I measured out on this board uh, your one, two, and three feet holes and then she wanted plus and minus one and a half inches for each of the levels of shelves. Um, I marked it at bottom and top so I don't lose track of that. Can you show? And then each of the holes is an inch and a half from the known level edge. So they're gonna go straight up. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna take the hardware out. As long as you're on a flat level surface, or flat surface, you Same. can line that up. For, if you have a lip, this is much better if you have a lip that you can push this against. If not, then just the edge of your cabinet. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so he, pay no attention to how close the holes are over here. This is a scrap piece of wood, but he did make sure that this was level, this was in line, and then all of these were an inch and a half over to be in line. Yeah, so all these are an inch and a half behind this lip here. Um, I did pre-drill the holes in the scrap wood so I could line the drill up. And then to get a consistent depth, I measured 11 sixteenths of an inch, which is the half inch into the shelf 
that we need to go, plus the 3 16 of an inch that this scrap wood measures. So I'm getting a consistent depth each time. Uh, the holes should be in the exact same place for a nice, stable level shelf. And then some of you will say, well, what happens to do the other to side? To the other side, you just flip it and you line it up. And now you're an inch and a half from the back edge. And you just do that. Uh, uh, what is it? 24 times? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one, two, three, four, but each one has, you know, three yeah. holes. Um, and then he's going to do this one over here. Guys, we are getting so close to these cabinets being done. I'm so happy and babe, this is literally genius. So like, these look clean too. Yeah. So, um, having the scrap piece of wood up against it can actually help you avoid kind of getting some fraying around the edge of the hole as well. Yeah. It looks so clean. You want to have the drill on a very high and fast setting, but you actually want to move the drill slowly in and out of the wood. A, to control and make sure you don't go too deep or too shallow. Um, and that also helps the wood fracturing as well. Yeah. Fast drill, slow hand. Yeah. We both kind of had the idea of a template and then I was thinking like paper and he's like, no, use wood so it's more sturdy and reusable. Etc. Etc. So yeah, good idea, babe. Proud of you. Thank you for bringing my vision to life. All right. So to finish off the cabinet shelves, um, you saw that I stained them, uh, the ones that go up here in the garage. Those are drying, but we are going to, of course, seal them to help protect them. Um, I am using fast drying water based polyurethane in a satin finish. Uh, it says you can recoat it in an hour. Other people who are more experienced said you can go a little quicker than that. I'm, I'm like around the 45 minute mark, and I'll do the second coat. Basically, you want to be able to sand in between each coat, um, and you don't want it tacky at all when you sand in between each coat. We're gonna do these that are in the built-in part real quick. Um, and then I'll go do the second coat on the other one in the garage here in just a moment. Um, you can do up to three coats on this. Um, two coats is required, three coats if desired is what it says. I wasn't sure if I could roll it on and sure enough, you can. Um, it doesn't say it on the instructions, but I, I like looked it up. So that's what we're using is a foam roller to roll it on so we get a nice, smooth, even finish. It is self-leveling, so yeah, I have no complaints. This is a really easy, like, user-friendly product. It's great. All right, it is time to put shelves up. They have gotten two coats on both sides of the boards. All the other thing, I do still need to finish the edge out, so don't mind that for a moment. But yeah, guys, these are these are built in. I obviously need some doors and drawers to finish up. We are going to also be covering that up there. Let's do some exciting things and put these shelves in. This is a big moment because this really is gonna like make them look great.
All right, guys, this is the final product of the built-ins. Now, I do still need to get the doors. They're being custom fitted. Nate's gonna help me build the drawers, and then we are going to build a door for that as well. But I didn't wanna make you wait any longer. I will update you guys on those things in a future video. Probably just the like final walkthrough of the basement. But for the most part, these are 98% uh, complete. This is what they look like. I'm so happy with how they turned out. Just some of the like details in the cabinetry itself. And yeah, I cannot wait to get these decorated. Literally, I have a bunch of supplies right there. So stay tuned for another video in just a little bit. I will be posting. I am about to get started decorating these and that video will be up very soon decorating my living room now that things are starting to come together and get in this room and be put together. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I cannot believe that I have these beautiful built-ins in my home. I'm so happy with them. Um, but stay tuned for that next video in just a few days. And I hope you guys have a great day. Mwah. Bye.